Howdy y'all, Caleb here. Let's look at some of the Seraphim lists from this past weekend. The ones I'm looking at are still in the old points. So a lot of these lists aren't really valid anymore, but I think they're still good to look at to see what is being played. Now, all three lists that we're going to look at today are coming from the Slambo GT, which is a Texas Masters GT down here in Texas. And they are still playing with the old points they're playing some i think they're even playing some old battle plans from the previous book um but it has some interesting lists to look at so we see here that gavin won the entire tournament with his seraphon thunder lizard he's a very good player one of the one of the best it, well i think he he may be listed as the best um on the itc i know he's the best seraphon player so there's that but he's very very good plays for um the Team America. So uh, he, he plays Seraphon very, very well. Now let's take a look at his list and see what he is running. He did go 5-0 and at this tournament, so well done there. So he's got Thunder Lizards and playing Show of Dominance as his grand strategy with Inspired as his triumph. We do have a Lord Croak, an Astrolith banner bearer there with the Fusil a Skink Priest with Heal, and an Engine of the Gods as the General with Command Trait Prime War Beast, Artifact Arcane Tome, Mount Trait Beastmaster, Spell Hand of Glory, and the Prayer of Curse. So a pretty standard layout with Thunder Lizard, and we know now that this entire cost is going up quite a bit. So we'll see his list, I think in total, is about 115 points more expensive now um, in the new battle scroll than it was um, as as he played it here. So he'll have to make some hard decisions on this one on the next uh, GT if he plans to run the same kind of thing, but a very good list. So Croak, as we know, Croak and Astroleth pair very well together to give you longer range on all your spells, pluses to your cast, a ward save there. The Priest uh, just goes awesome with either the engine or all his Basildons, which we'll look at here in a second, to give them pluses to their saves. Run, shoot, and charge, plus one to hit, all that kind of good stuff. Um, the Engine of the Gods, as as a general, is important because it does have that Arcane Tome, which lets it be the vassal, the Skink Wizard vassal for Croak. So not only do you get extra range from the Astrolith, you can send all those spells through the Engine of the Gods. So very important. This is kind of a, a key piece of the army because it is the general. It has all the buffs on it. But it can also go in and do melee, especially if he keeps it in range of Croak. If, it, if it's within 12 of Croak, then you can cast through it. So that's very good because that gives Croak extra, extra range on his spells. Uh, Hand of Glory being on, on the Engine of Gods is really good because that lets you get away from having your other Skink Wizards. You want that Hand of Glory on, on whatever you're going to be doing damage with that turn, whether it's the Basildon. Whether it's your engine, if you're sending it in a melee, you can get that hand of glory on it. Battle line, we have a total of 40 skinks and 5 source guard. So the skinks are basically just playing board control screens, having some bodies there. They will die very easily, um, especially without a scaly skin now. But they can provide the board control that you need. They have, he has uh, three Basildons, one with Solar Engine and two with Arc of Sotek. We've seen this kind of list, him play it very successfully before and win previous GTs with the very similar list of this. Uh, definitely likes those Arc of Soteks. So cheap, and they still have a one-up save, minus one damage. So uh, The endless spells here are good. Horgast for 40 points and Chronomatic Cogs, which also goes up in points now. So this is another one of the things that's in ca causing his list to go up in points. Um, but a very good combination there where you've got cogs. Um, you almost have to take cogs with croak because if you, if uh, cogs will let you reroll your spells. So if you don't have that and you miscast with, with croak, your turn is, is wasted. So it's, it's kind of like, you know, when you take Nagash, if you miscast with Nagash or Teclas or somebody, then it's just your whole strategy is, is, is done. So cogs is very, very good with croak. Um, Horgast is just an amazing spell because in this build with Croak and Astrolith, 
and the you know the engine, all those extend in your range. You can send the Horgast easily across the table, um, and it has a giant aura that shuts off inspiring presence, and and it makes extra models run. So you have enough range damage between Croak's Comet's Call, Stellar Tempest, the Mortals from the engine, which you potentially will double fire if if needed. And Basildon, which would be your other option of double fire, you're going to do some damage turn one, and then you can shut off Inspiring Presence. So a very, very good combo there with Horgast. Um, I did go up 115 points this list now. So, you know, what what does what does he give up? I think the easy answer would be guard. That's 115 points right there. Um, but that's a that's a hard take because Croak will be a lot easier to kill without these 10 ablative wounds for him. Um, maybe some skinks and and cogs if you like to live dangerously. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see what he runs in the new points. Um, obviously he does very well with this. He's he's the one we can all blame for <laughs> our, our points getting increased because um I think I think we may have. I think he may have said something like he's only lost one game with Thunder Lizards recently, and it was something like something ridiculous, like almost thirty and one or something like that. So, uh, thanks, Gavin, <laughs> for increasing our points. Oh, there is a. Um, I was gonna pull this up real quick. I'll link it below. Weird Knobs did a live stream of this game five where he was playing Ben Richardson, also a very good player. Um, he's here from my club, and he's playing Lumineth Realm Lords, a good list. He's played this one a lot, and um, Gavin was able to defeat him here on this one. But I thought it was interesting because you could see some of what Gavin's doing with these Bastilladons. And he, he starts kind of castled up here on this right side. I think they were playing with terrain rules, and I think this bottom right piece of terrain was um arcane so he had an extra plus one to cast so that means croak was was at plus five to cast so plus two naturally plus one from the astrolith um plus one from sacred asterisms the darty yeah and then plus one from arcane terrain so plus five to cast plus four to unbind uh re-rolling those with cogs just uh is gonna shut down your magic phase so very good there but you can also see that he plays a he screens with those Basildons uh, very well. You'll see him kind of castle up here with his Basildons as a screen. You almost see some of these skinks held back here. I think he may pop some of them into this realm shaper to help control this middle objective. But very a very castle formation here with the Basildons as a screen, and then he played very aggressive with the engine of God. Sent the engine up there. Uh, to the top right to take over that objective and was able to control kind of the right side of the board as he whittled down Ben's main forces there on the top left. Um, uh, also something of note, I noticed that he was playing his Astrolith and Skink Priest very far back. You can see them all the way down here in the bottom right corner. So the Astrolith is, is, is kind of you know, it's not really the cog of this this army, but it is very important. So you do want to keep this Astrolith alive so that he can buff Croak and all the things that Croak needs to do. So you do want to keep him out of shooting range if possible. Now you do still have to keep him within 12 inches of everything that you need um, your cast for. Um, but very important to keep him there. The priest, he must have moved down here later in the game because it looks like he, he buffed up this Basildon. So maybe he buffed him up and then moved down because uh, you got to keep that priest within 12 inches of whatever you're wanting to buff. You got to keep him pretty close. Uh, but interesting play there with, uh, looks like, oh, it looks like he got a summons off there to the right. So uh, it, just interesting to kind of see some of the, the loadout there that he was and the deployment that he was playing with. So... Uh, looked like it was a pretty close game, and by the end of it, he had worn down uh, Ben, and uh, Ben was ahead on points for most of the game, but I think he ended up getting tabled, everything maybe except the Fox by the end of the game, and and Gavin still had quite a few monsters left over to, to control the table. So, uh, good game there. Great job, Gavin, with that list. The next one I wanted to look at was 
Um, where is he at? Andrew. Uh, you'll see Andrew pop up in the comments quite a bit here. Um, he came in 10th place, went 4-1. and one, A very good showing there for Andrew. A good, a good Seraphon player. He is also, this is his list here. He's also playing Thunder Lizards. And he's got Croak, an Astrolith Bear. <laughs> Sounds familiar. A Skink Priest with Heal. A Skink Star Priest with Hand of Glory. A Skink Star Seer with Bind Endless Spell. And Engine of the Gods as your General with Prime War Beast, Beastmaster, Arcane Tome, Hand of Glory, and Curse. So some very similar things there, but an added addition of that Star Priest and Star Seer. Both, you know, have a great role in the army, especially when you have Knights, which is, I think is what he has. Yeah. So he's got five Source Guard and three units of Knights. Are they in a... Um, they're not in Bounty Hunters. They're in a Battle Regiment. So he can get down to five drops. Okay. Okay. Battle Regiment and Command Entourage. So he's got his uh, units of Knights. Those Knights can get buffed just so well by the Skink Star Seer and the Star Priest. They do amazingly well taking those buffs. Uh, but still on with Solar Engine. And then he's also got the Cogs and the Horror Ghast. So a very good combination there. 1975. So he does have a little bit of room to play with with the points increase because that Cogs goes up 30. What else do we have that goes up? The Star, uh, the Skink Priest goes up 30. The Astrolith 15. Croak 20. Engine of the Gods 20. So, I mean, he's kind of, he's dealing with the same thing up about 115 points. So. He'll have to, to make a little bit more. He's got a little bit more wiggle room, but he is going to have to make some room in, in the next list. So, All right, good list there for Andrew. And let's see. I think we had one more I wanted to highlight that did pretty well. Did three and two. Where are you at? Sinto. Uh, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, came in three and two with a Thunder Lizard list. And we'll take a look at his here, too. Uh, Thunder Lizard, Seraphon, it, oh, it took the grand strategy of continuous expansion. I haven't seen anybody try to take that one. That's a Seraphon um, specific one where you need to end up with all your monsters over on their side of the table. So um, I'd be interested to know if he if he achieved that very much this, this uh, tournament. An Astrolith. Let's see. We got a leader of an Astrolith. We have a Stegodon with Skink Chief as our general. Prime Warbeast, Scastric Bow, Cloak of Feathers. And Beastmasters. All right, nice. I like the, I'm in love with the Stegodon Chief. I I love putting it in the list. I, I know maybe it's, you know, the Engine of the Gods fulfills a lot of that role of that melee beat stick that, I mean, you can get it to do that. Stegodon Chief does it better. Um, now that they're getting closer in points with the Engine of the Gods going up to 285, you might start seeing the Stegodon Chief more, but, you know, probably not. <laughs> but I do love the Stegodon Chief. Especially with um, all the buffs on them like here. And then we got Cloak of Feathers, which just makes them uh, plus four to the move, um, minus one to hit, and flies. So just just a great little artifact to give to your Skink Chief. Skink Priest with Heal. Engine of the Gods with Fusil and the Curse Prayers. We have a Salon Star Master with a Tixie Grubs. Let's just get our rerolls so we don't have to worry about Cogs. So he probably doesn't have Cogs. No, no, no Cogs. That's good. Um, a Tixie Grub, Stellar Tempest, of course, for Stel uh, for the Salon. Really good at dealing with hordes. And another Skink Priest. Oh no, this list is gonna gonna be going up a lot in points, I think, because uh, we got two Skink Priests. Which I mean, they're great at ninety, so taking two of them it makes sense. One second on as a battle line. We have two units of ten Skinks, a Bastildon with Solar Engine, and an Arc of Sotek Bastildon. Nice. So I like that there. We do have a Command Entourage, Expert Conquerors, and another Command Entourage. So we're going with all the drops. Um, so cool. I like that one. It, it will be going up in points. What? We got uh, 30, 50, 70, 100, 150. Another 115 points. What? That's odd. Uh, even though the list is slightly different. Also up another 115 points. So, All right, guys. That's it for today. Uh, three lists from Slambo, all using the old points, but doing quite well. Maybe, uh, <laughs> I would say maybe this will uh, keep Gavin from winning another GT with with Seraphon, but I doubt it. <laughs> He's a very good player and uh, pilots Seraphon as, as good as anybody does. So I'm sure we'll be talking about his list sometime in the future. All right, guys. 
We'll see you all next time.